Hello, everyone, and welcome to the City of Quincy Board of License Commissioners meeting held June 21st at 4 p.m. Um, Sue, could you call the roll? Yes. Deputy Chief Barron. Here. Detective Brown. Here. Commissioner Castley. Here. Director Duca. Present. Chair Crispo. Present. Five members. And I will now read in the open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio recording or video of this meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Um, agenda item number one, it doesn't look like Mark Sauter is in the crowd. So, um, he called, he's running a little late, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip to agenda item number two. Here we got in the request of the Housenet Community Council for a special use permits for one day liquor license for two upcoming events. July 3rd, annual Family Fun Day on July 3rd at Edgewater Drive and September 10th, Housenet Chowder Fest, beer and wine. Aaron Cavan and James McCarthy, are they here? Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead with agenda item number three. Here we got in the request of Heritage Sports Ventures for a special use permit one day liquor licenses for upcoming community events at the Veterans Memorial Stadium, July 3rd, Drum Corp event day, August 19th, 20 and 21 for a music festival and con concert, Joe Cunningham. Come on up, Joe. Good. Thank you for coming, and why don't you tell us um, about your events at the stadium? Yep, thank you for having me. Um, so the Drum Corps event that's um, being led by DCI, which is Drum Corps International, um, we're working with the folks at the Boston Crusaders locally. Um, so they've done events here at the stadium the past few years, I believe. Um, so it's gonna be around six or seven bands performing. Um, it, the big day will be July 2nd. Um, that will be when all of them perform. So we're expecting around uh, 1,500 attendees. Um, and we'll just be selling uh, beer and like seltzers those days to attendees. And then the big one will be August 20th. I believe we're announcing tomorrow. Um, that will be a music festival we're calling In Between Days. Um, so that will be eight acts um, going throughout the day. The genre is like adult uh, alternative rock. It's nothing too crazy, but we'll have eight acts ranging from uh, 11 a.m. to we're finishing up around 9 p.m. And uh, we're hoping for around 5,000 attendees for that. Okay. Um, and July 2nd, um, you would come before this board for that previously. Correct, yeah, yeah, they were still kind of figuring out the schedule, so just wanted to get all the dates in there. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Yep. Um, any questions, concerns from anyone here regarding Heritage Sports Ventures for a special use permit one day liquor licenses? I got a, just a general question. Uh, John Rodefields, he's still around all road. So they're asking for a permit to use the stadium and they're going to sell alcohol there and you're keeping the proceeds from the alcohol how's the city benefit do we charge them money what about the liability i mean to me i believe when that when this when the um whoever gave that stadium to the school department gave that to the school so the schools could use that detective so, brown for me to that for you so john uh heritage sports they're the company that uh, that runs it. They run the uh, free jacks right now, so they have an agreement with the city. So it's it, it's the same company that's doing that. It's the same thing that was with the lacrosse team, and now with the free jacks. So it's the same company doing the same venue. They have a lease agreement with the city, so it's they already have their bartenders. They already have their tip certifications, so they already have something pre. But I mean, are we making revenue as a city? Uh, 
I don't know. I'm guessing they're paying some type of lease for their. their, their I uh, believe we are. I don't know off the top of my head, but I think that was a part of the agreement. Okay. So it's a, it's the same company. It's the same venue, and it's just they, they've had this agreement. There's no more sporting events. Obviously, school's out. There's nothing being used there, so it's not going to affect anything for a school uh, game or anything like that. I'm just personally myself. I'm against um, drinking events at the stadium. That should be. They should. You know. I don't think we should turn that into something where, um, you know, like I heard on the radio about the free jacks coming, and one of the things they were advertising was like there's like a beer bus or something. You know. So it's like, you know, you need alcohol to try to get people to come to the events, but that stadium. You know, I don't know the history, but I'll research it. So next time I come here, I'll, I'll learn the history. But the bottom line is that stadium used to belong to the school department. And somehow a few years ago, the school department transferred that back to the city. And when the school department had that, things like this would never happen. So now that the city has it, Mayor Cope um, basically allows whatever people request to happen if there are people that he's friendly with. So like, like, could I rent the stadium out? Like, in a person use the stadium? Well, like some of the youth. So when even uh, youth football and things like that, like I'm part of that. So we we, the park? we we have to do that. We have to get permits for all those things as well. I mean, so if I you wanted to, a reggae concert there once a year and have like you know Quincy Reggae Fest. We, we know what I'm saying is these people are uh, well established. They're they're, a, they're they're a company that it's a venue that does this, John, and they're doing a great job with the Free Jacks. Like I said, they're, they're very well staffed. They have private security. They have police details. They have, it's very well staffed and they're doing a good job. So as far as you're saying is the city making money, I, I, I can't give you 100%. I would say they are. That they're paying for the parks department and, and the details and everything else out of their own pocket. So it's nothing's coming out of the city. Well, it's just it's just the drinking at the stadium because like I said, I, what, what I believe from my memory is that you know, when that stadium was left to the city and stuff, the people who left it to the city, they were they were against alcohol. Right. And so it's kind of like going against their wishes. So whether whether I'm wrong or that, or, or but I will research that. But the bottom line is that there is liability. So it's get, we're getting all people like coming to the city and like you said, for paying for the police, like hopefully they pay the police for details and the police aren't just working there for free on the dime of the taxpayers, but um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Seeing them board members? Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, <coughs> any food trucks or any food being? Um, for the DCI, we're trying to establish like the expected number of attendees, and that will kind of dictate if we go the food truck route or not. So I can get that over to you Perfect. as soon as like the next week or so. We should know. Um, th for the concerts, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be using the same group that we had as the, the for the Free Jacks matches. Any other questions, concerns from board members? Looking for a motion. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Heritage Sports Ventures for a special use permits, one day liquor license for the upcoming community events at Veterans Memorial Stadium. July 3rd, Drum Corp event day, August 19th, 20th, and 21st is the music festival and concert represented Second. by Joe Cunningham. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Good on Agenda item number four, here we've got the request of Mid Widowmaker Brewing in partnership with the <coughs> Chamber of Commerce for a special use permit for a one-day beer and wine license for Kilroy Square Beer Garden from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday beginning Thursday, July 28th until Saturday, October 1st. Tim Cahill and Ryan Levery. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Why don't you tell us about um, what you plans are for Kilroy Square. Sure, I'll start. Um, Tim Cahill. Um, we're asking for a basic continuation of what we're doing right now, what we've been doing since um, May 17th, I believe it was. We started three nights a week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at Kilroy Square, selling um, the folks at Widowmaker selling uh, beer, um, and then the food truck from um, the Townshend and Pearl and Lime selling food as well as wine. 
So uh, we haven't established a, a permanency there yet with the city. So what we're asking to do is continue on the 30-day 30, the 30 licenses through the end of the year or until we get a permanent solution to that. But it's worked out great. Crowds have been really good. Um, they want to keep coming. Uh, the, the, I think the crowds have been behaved, stayed within the, the demise premises for the most part. And uh, other than the first day, we haven't had any calls or complaints. You know, the bathrooms work out well inside the garage. So, um, and I think uh, this guy's selling a lot of beer, which we think is good. Yeah, uh, so it's our fourth year, as most of you know, with the gazebo down in Adams Inn previously. This is our second year at Kilroy Square. I think it's helped bring a lot of attention to the, the new area down there. So we're happy to be continuing this if, if granted. So thank you. It's been great. Thank you. Any questions, concerns from anyone with request to Widowmaker Brewing in partnership with the Quincy Chamber of Commerce for a special use permit, beer and wine for Kilroy Square? Seeing none. Board members, any questions, concerns? <coughs> Seeing none, looking for a motion. I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Widowmaker Brewing in partnership with the Quincy Chamber of Commerce for a special use permits and one day beer wine licenses. For the Kilroy Square Beer Garden, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays beginning Thursday, July 28th until Saturday, October 1st. Represented by Tim Cahill and Ryan Lavery. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Agenda item number five, hearing, re hearing regarding the request of the Board of Directors of the U.S. Naval Shipbuilding Museum in the USS Salem for 30 special use permit one day liquor licenses in support of functions taking place on the USS Salem. And um, at the request of the Board of Directors, um, we will continue this without prejudice until a new date. Um, and that will um, be coming soon. Next is agenda item number six. Here we got in the request of Waldwin Group, DBA, Dunkin' Donuts for a common visual license as a result of new ownership change for the following Dunkin' Donuts, 550 Adams Street, 388 East Guantanamo Street, and 751 East Guantanamo Street. No changes in the existing operations or staff. Clayton Turnbull. Hi, how are Hi, you? Good afternoon. Good uh, afternoon. Welcome. Madam Chair. Yeah, I'm excited about being in Quincy. I, I, that's what's on my mind. Uh, I've heard great things about the, your city. I've lived the ride all my life. But I uh, hear it's great to do business here. We're excited about purchasing the uh, three stores that's in your city. And we're, we're looking forward to being part of the city. So that's, uh, that's really what I come to say. I, I respectfully ask for you to approve. Uh, we've, we've changed nothing. We'll be remodeling the stores. Um, as we get through the construction and the architectural piece. So we're hoping to continue. We know that Duncan's been in Quincy, so it's not a new brand, but uh, we're just gonna add on to the positive, uh, hopefully the positive experience you've had with us. So we're excited about, I'm excited. I, I've been in Boston all my life uh, and doing business there, so I'm excited to do business in Quincy. Really am. Great, thank you. Uh, any questions, concerns from anyone <coughs> Regarding Waldwin Group buying the existing Dunkin' Donuts at 550 Adams, 388 East Guan Street, and 751 East Guan Street. Seeing none, board members, any questions, concerns? Seeing none, make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Waldwin Group DBA Dunkin' Donuts for a common victual of licenses as a result of an ownership change for the following Dunkin' Donuts 550 Adams Street. 388 East Quantum Street, 751 East Quantum Street, and no changes in existing operations or staff. Represented by Clayton Churnville. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Congratulations Enjoy and good luck. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Agenda item number seven. Here we got a request of L. Refray Market, Inc. doing business as L. Refray Mediterranean Market 
for a common victual license for the premise located at 35 Scammell Street. Proposed manager Taha Zenden. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. Why don't you tell us yes. what you're going to do with the market? Okay. We uh, built a grocery store with international food. So from all over the world, like Mediterranean uh, market, the Middle East. And uh, we're preparing uh, food like, like Egyptian cuisine. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions, concerns from anyone here? Um, <coughs> board members? Commissioner Kessler. Uh, quick question. Uh, any tobacco products being sold? No. No? Okay. Make a motion to grant the request of El Refre Market Inc. DBA El Refre Mediterranean Market for a common victual license for the premises located at 35 Scammell Street. Proposed manager is Taha Sedan, represented by Taha Sedan. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank You're you. all set. Thank Good you. Good luck. Thank you. Agenda item number eight, here regarding the request of SWL Restaurant Incorporated doing business as Fantastic Seafood Restaurant for a common victual license for the premise located at 297 Newport Ave. Proposed manager, Sue Wong, seven days a week, 11.30 a.m. to 1 a.m. Attorney Chung Lee. Hi, how Hi. are you? Welcome. I'm sorry. That's okay. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Why don't you tell us what your plans are for our fantastic seafood restaurant? Sure. This is this restaurant uh, proposal has been around since 2020. Uh, I apologize. Last time we didn't the deal didn't go through um, due to the pandemic, uh, lack of knowledge of what was going to happen in the future. The deal ultimately fell through, and I did tell, inform uh, Miss Kindergarten about that. Mm -hmm. um, funny thing happened. Uh, along the way, early this year, uh, both the uh, buyer and the seller met up again, and pandemic seems to uh, have uh, subsided somewhat. And they said, "Let's let's make a go at it." And here we are. We're here tonight. Plan substantially has not changed, as everybody knows. Um, the building has not been occupied during these two years. It's been vacant. It used to be a restaurant. It's uh, fitted out for a restaurant. There's a uh, uh, kitchen facilities and service and so forth. Um, it's just it never got rented out, never operated as a person. So we are taking it uh, as is. We have signed a lease and an asset purchase agreement. You forgive me, I'm just trying to catch my breath. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're fine. <laughs> and it's substantially similar to what it was two years ago. Um, it's basically a two ten year five plus five lease. We purchased the assets, we're just going to go in and we're going to. Uh, construct uh, and operate an oriental seafood restaurant. Uh, Mr. Wong, he was supposed to be waiting out in the, uh, the waterfall with me for me. I went out before to take a look. He's not there yet. Um, he might have missed me. Um, but in any event, he is, he is an owner of a restaurant in New Hampshire. He's been working in, for, oh, in excess of 12 to 15 years. So in terms of operations, management, or restaurant, it's without doubt that he's qualified to do so. Um, doesn't like New Hampshire much, so he'll be leaving for one of his family members up there. Wants to come down here, revisit this op this uh, location over in Quincy. He feels, as he did two years ago with Mr. Uh, Lee King Lee, who's the pres uh, the treasurer of the corporation. He feels that uh, Quincy is a prime location for uh, uh, business operations, and he continues to feel about it this way to this year. So we're here tonight to ask the board to approve this common victory license um, to operate a restaurant in a pre-existing outfitted restaurant uh, facility at 297 uh, Newport Avenue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions, concerns from anyone regarding Fantastic Seafood Restaurant at 297 Newport Ave? Seeing none, board members, Commissioner Kessler. 
Uh, quick question. Yes, when sir. Do you know when you plan to open? We want to do it like right away. Like okay. I said, it's been outfitted already. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working with the building department, inspection services. Once they give us the okay and everything is copacetic, we are intended to operate. Um, I talked to uh, Ms. Kindergren. Um, this is the first of two. Uh, I'll be open with the board. We are looking to add liquor service, but mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. we're primarily focused on uh, uh, the principal uh, business, which is food, oriental food. Okay. But uh, we are looking to open as soon as is possible. Okay. <coughs> before opening, just give us a call. That way we can do an inspection before Absolutely. you open. I most certainly will. Perfect. I'll tell Ms. Kindergren. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Is the one Mr. Wong uh, runs now in New Hampshire, did, did they serve alcohol? So was he from Yes, they did. Okay. Yes, they did. Okay. Yeah. He's the owner of that restaurant, right. so he has a full staff. Okay. Uh, have you applied for a building permit yet? Uh, the you said you were working with the building department. Uh, no, no. Um, we first uh, wanted to come to the city council, we, uh, sure. the, the license board rather. I did talk to the city councilor, um, but we, we will be working with the inspectional services. So, yeah, I would just ask, just make, uh, apply for a building permit. Absolutely. And then permit Absolutely. And get fire department and building department. Of course, okay. of course. Thank you. Yes. Like to make a motion to grant the request of SWL Restaurant Incorporated DBA Fantastic Seafood Restaurant for a common victual license for the premises located at 297 Newport Ave. Proposed manager is Sue Wong. Hours of operation are seven days a week, 11:30 a.m. to 1 a.m. Represented by Attorney Chung Lee. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you very much, and I apologize for being late. Oh, no. Traffic was horrendous, <laughs> but in any event, I got here. Thank you very much. Good luck. Agenda item number nine. Hearing regarding the request of Off the Hook Bar and Grill, LLC, doing business as Off the Hook Bar and Grill, John Gallagher, manager, for an alteration of the license premise at 1269 C Street to reflect outdoor dining and patio areas of 1,625 square feet, which includes additional new walk-up bar with four seats. The outdoor area accommodates seating for 44. Attorney Robert Fleming is here uh, to represent, and um, I will say for the record, um, we did receive a request for continuance from a direct butter um, that had a death in the family and could not be able to be here today. Um, so with that, if it's okay with the board, I suggest um, letting Mr. Galligan use his temporary extension of premise to reflect the 1,625 square feet of patio until um, we continue this to the July hearing. I <coughs> that um, that's something we could do um, it, it, because of because of the holiday yesterday she was unable to get it here um, her, her notice so um, with it being such short time you know I would like to hear from everyone involved especially a direct butter so if that's okay with you attorney Fleming I did advise Mr. Galligan concerning that request, and he, he's okay with that. Obviously, the concern was whether or not he'd be able to, you know, continue to use um, the outdoor patio areas uh, during this this time frame. Um, he did have a question with respect to the proposed um, four stool bar that he was proposing in one of the patios areas. I, I think it's been built or under construction, not obviously not licensed yet, um, but that's something he'd be able to kind of implement and use during this temporary license time or it's it's obviously very important you know for his uh, his service for those uh, those areas how long have you had the you said 44 seats on the side is it 44 or 28 kind of 28 it's 44 total, total between the two sides between the two yeah, sides. between the two sides total. <coughs> yeah. that and was all did side. you use this side here um last year when we originally came up in front of you guys what may of last year prior to opening 
It was 40 floor seats on both sides of the building from the last colorful drawing you had. Um, that was somewhere along the line, the square footage was the improper. But, no, so I know, yes, but, but you we, did use it last yes, year. Yes, yeah, 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 that's been up and running and that was under use. Um, I always went under the belief of 44 seats. I'd never double check the square footage. No, that's fine. Uh, we have this here. Yeah, you just gave this to me. Yeah, that's the uh, very that's a very important thing to note today before this board is that this is we're not we're not changing the premises as, as was licensed uh, last year. Uh, there was a discrepancy with respect to the square footage of the exterior patio areas, which uh, John and his wife Brooke have been using. Uh, so we're, for the record, for City of Quincy as well as ABCC, you know, correcting that square footage. Um, Speaking of those areas. for myself, the uh, the outdoor bar has not been permitted. It's built. Uh, I'm okay with temporary use of it under the temporary extension of premise. Uh, I don't know what how the board members feel. But um, I'm okay with that. I let me say that um, we did get 18 letters of support. However, there are people that are not far. So I think that it would be best to do what you've been doing and to come back in July and, and let's talk about that outdoor bar area and, and that being fair to the, the people that haven't been able to to be heard to date. Were there questions we could answer uh, t today you know, concerning uh, that and the, maybe, again, maybe address their concerns? Again, you know? because the, the uh, direct abutter is in here, Certainly, yeah. then and, and it is part of, you know, the property that I, I just don't feel comfortable Understood. myself. Understood. That's just myself. Yeah. Um, Saying yes. I wasn't sure if there was anybody here today that had concerns with respect to the use I'm of the I'm sure there well. are. Yeah. I'm sure there are, but okay. but do we, you know, do it now and do it later as and well? Then, yeah. And then Understood. not hear the person that's the direct abutter. Understood. You know, yeah. um, I, I think let's be safe and and for myself. Absolutely. And we'll have detail with respect to that, that bar as well the next time when we come in, in July. Exactly. So everybody we, can hear. We don't know anything yeah. really about it. Okay. Um, but okay. any other questions, concerns? No. Okay. I think, um, do we make a motion to continue it and they can use it ex uh, status quo? Is that yes. the idea? Yeah. Are we going to provide a date certain for the next? Uh, so that is um, depending upon um, the, the change of the date from July 19th to reschedule to July 26th due to a conflict um, with the board. So um, I, I would say that the 26th would be the date. Okay, so we're clear it's permitted use under the temporary license <coughs> for the exterior patio areas, but but not no use of the bar, correct? Right. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to continue this case to July 26th for further discussion. In the meantime, the applicant may use the premises uh, under the existing temporary extension of premise license. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next is agenda item number 10. Here regarding the request of Neon Beverage LLC doing business as Neon Marketplace 453. Kyle Roberg, manager for an off-premise package store, retail license, wine and malt, beverage license for the premise located at 453, 465 Washington Street and 857 Southern Artery. Alcohol sales from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., 10 a.m. on Sundays. The applicant also requests a common visual license for the same location. The proposed premise is a 4,999 square foot single story convenience store. Attorney Douglas Troyer. Good I afternoon. You. Good, yourself? Tell us what you plan on doing there. We'll do. Thank you very much for your time, Madam Chair and the rest of the board. Uh, my name is Doug Troyer. I represent uh, Neon Washington Street 
Quincy LLC, who is the current owner of the property. Uh, with me today is uh, Bajat uh, Sharif, who is the Neon brand um, leader for the, for the site. I um, also have Everett Carrera, who's the project development manager. I um, have someone else with me for the underground storage tank, which is next. Uh, I think it may make sense to kind of give you a little brief background of the property, where it is. Um, so Neon Washington Street purchased the property back in February, I think around February 9th, 2022. Uh, the property is located on three separate lots. It's 463, 465 Washington Street, as well as 857 Southern Ottery. Um, the property uh, was developed as a uh, single story building that was utilized, I think, uh, most recently as a Pilates studio, and then also had a very large parking lot located primarily on the 456 Washington Street side. Uh, the property historically was used, I believe, as a uh, used car sales lot uh, and had a very large parking lot area. Uh, in accordance with the plans in which we have gone before the uh, zoning enforcement officer, um, uh, basically the, my clients are looking to raise the existing building, which they actually have already uh, proceeded with. They've already raised uh, the building, have cleared the site for preparation of construction. Uh, we're looking to construct a new convenience store on a similar size footprint of what the existing building was. Um, and basically was looking, we also are making some substantial parking traffic flow and other site improvements. Uh, we're also looking to construct four self-service gasoline islands and four fuel dispensers on the easterly side of the lot. Uh, there's also going to be a protective canopy with downward reflected lighting over the gasoline islands. And we're installing state-of-the-art underground storage tanks, which we'll get into further. The property is located in a BB zoning district uh, that permits retail use of a convenience store with food service offerings and a motor vehicle gasoline service station use as of right. Uh, we have uh, designed the project to meet and exceed all zoning ordinance requirements to date. It's our position that the proposed use as a convenience store with food service and typical convenience store offerings is a benefit and will provide convenient and useful services for the city and neighborhood. Uh, we believe we're uh, looking to provide significant improvements for access to and egress to the site, as well as provide a more orderly flow of traffic to and from Washington Street. Uh, there is an existing uh, exit that went to Ring Street, which, which is the residential neighborhood that abuts us. We have closed that uh, in, in an effort to uh, eliminate any uh, egress or ingress from Ring Street. Uh, that was well received by the uh, planning department as well as the traffic engineer who we had con uh, initial conversations with about. Uh, the project affords increased landscaping. Uh, currently, it's a very bare site with really zero landscaping. Uh, we are uh, providing some increased landscaping buffers uh, along the residential areas. We're installing fencing and, uh, and trees along those areas. Uh, we are also uh, preserving views, light, and air to surrounding properties. Uh, we're actually also adding a stormwater drainage system that will substantially improve existing conditions and is designed to accommodate all anticipated on-site runoff. It's, uh, it's our belief that a project is consistent with the overall development and surrounding area and is appropriate in a zone for the specific site because it's at an intersection of a major road and the site has been and still is appropriate for such traffic oriented <coughs> use. We're before you on this permit uh, for a uh, CV for the food service as well as uh, we're looking to offer beer and wine services at the site. Uh, I have with me representatives who can answer any questions that the board may have. Uh, and with that, I open it up to you guys. Thank you. Um, is anyone here um, wish to speak on the request for Neo Beverage LLC doing business? for a retail package store wine and malt beverage license. <coughs> okay. Um, please come up in an orderly fashion. Thank you. And I will ask you to state your name and your address for the record. Uh, Joseph Franchosa. I'm the owner of Presidential Liquors, 25 Scammell Street. Um, I don't have a problem with competition. Um, the uh, the Mediterranean market that you just approved uh, is my neighbor. Uh, what I am afraid of is the degradation of the neighborhood. Uh, we have, as you can see, a lot of stores already in the area, and I'm not sure adding another liquor license is really what the neighborhood needs. So that's all I'll say. Thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, my name is Ra Raginder Singh. So my son owned the liquor store or the quick six discount liquors. My both son owned it. your address, it. please? 603 Washington. So we are worried about that things like that, you know, because my kids are depending on that liquor store, small liquor store. And you guys already taken some parts away from like nips like that kind of stuff like that. I heard that city of me. And plus like, so we are just wondering like uh, people go for over there for the gas station for gas. If they get the beers and get drunk, somebody get killed. City has responsible for that. Gas station. gas station plus the liquor, beer and wine. Yes. That's you. I want to be know that because so how many liquor stores you guys, uh, beer and wine, do you guys need that area? They have like Point Liquor, 7 Eleven, Old Colony, 603 Vision Street, Mine One, and plus like uh, Presidential, so that's in small that area. And, then and the, the bar. Yes. Seven level, yeah. <coughs> Washington. So that's yeah, everybody over there. We're going to do this orderly, okay? I, I just ask everybody just to, oh, to wait no, their uh, turn. No, in. we got about ten little stores. Thank you, sir. He, this oh. gentleman is. Am I, yeah. I know, yeah. but if you want to come up and speak, yeah, he can I'm going to ask you to please wait your turn behind right. the woman Sorry. that was next. Yeah, that's why I want to know that, like you know, because I don't want to be moved. My business is going to go away like that. We already have the recessions coming up now. We already get killed by before. Not opening hours like that. Hard to get the laborers like that, you know. So they, they are working. My kids are working seven days at the liquor store. So this is the way we are working hard for my feed their, feed their families. So if other liquor store comes, we lose in the business. That's we wanted to ask the city. We don't do it. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Judy DeShane. I own Point Liquors at 230 Washington Street. Um, I just think the city is saturated in that area for liquor stores, and I don't know the need for more alcohol in that area. You can go within a quarter mile radius, and there's another liquor store. There's six or seven of us right within a quarter of a mile. So I just think it might be a detriment to the, the neighborhood. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kim Murphy. I'm the pastor at Quincy Point Congregational Church at 444 Washington Street. And we are directly across the street from the proposed uh, convenience store gas station. And we do have some grave concerns about the uh, licensing for beer and wine. We have a number of AA groups that use our facility. We have a particularly large AA group that meets Friday evenings. And according to the liquor licensing rules about how far does a um, establishment have to be from a church or a school, the subsection 16C premises located within a radius of 500 feet of a school or church cannot be licensed to sell alcoholic beverages unless the LLA determines in writing and after a hearing that the premises are not detrimental to the educational and spiritual activities of the church or school unless the premises of those are of an inholder or unless the parts of the building are located 10 or more floors above the street level. A 500 foot distance under this subsection is measured in a straight line from the nearest point of the church or school to the nearest point of the premises to be licensed and we are within 500 feet of the proposed building. And considering that a number of our AA groups often meet during and after the meeting outside in our parking lot, it's very close to that facility. So we are um, the Congregational Church, Quincy Point Congregational Church, and its businesses in that parking lot area are against this. Hi everyone, Dan English, 22 Baxter Ave, not directed butter, but around the corner. Uh, my concern is less about the liquor license, sorry. Uh, more just, I'm concerned about the gas pumps having, you know, those TVs that sometimes do like advertisements and being able to hear those loudly through the neighborhood. Uh, I know the gas station operates till 11 p.m., which is definitely past sleeping hours during the week. Uh, so I just wanna make sure, that's my big concern, pretty much noise from 
any sort of video system that might, might be installed into the gas tanks. And then lighting as well, but I think I talked to the lawyer beforehand, he said the lighting will all be down, uh, but both lighting and any noise emanating from those video screens. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Jean Lucas. I live at Five Prairie Place, which is about four and a half blocks from the site, and I also uh, attend at Quincy Point Congregational Church. My concerns are, as the previous gentleman said, the combination of the liquor license with the gas station. Um, also, the extended hours, um, 8 a.m. in the morning is rather early, 11 p.m. at night is rather late. We already have as has been mentioned, multiple uh, multiple retail locations to purchase beer and wine. The 7-Eleven is literally less than a block away. We just had that new strip mall put in in the corner, so the traffic patterns in that area are already much different than they were just a few years ago, and I certainly appreciate the efforts that they're making in that regard. Um, and I think folks in the neighborhood do appreciate having um, having gas station and having a, a place to get food that's convenient. Um, but uh, the, the liquor license, I think, is not something that we need. We have far too many. I don't think it's a fair competition for our, our local business owners who are trying to stay in business and who are not also providing gas. Um, and also, it's a, it's a place that a lot of kids are traversing all the time. Um, so, you know, on their way to school, that's a, a main thoroughfare for kids going to Point Webster and to um, Clifford Marshall. Um, so that also is a part of my concern. Um, and as sort of a side note, I, forgive me for not being well prepared because I just became aware of this meeting, but um, when I was looking up uh, the company earlier, it looked as though they were saying that, um, you know, they were using very modern kind of technology for checking out. Um, and I, I just have a concern about, you know, if they're selling alcohol, like what structures are in place are, you know, I know there's been con some concern in uh, the world of liquor licenses about um, what the checkout situation is and making sure that we don't have any self-check and that there are proper um, strictures in place to prevent underage people from purchasing alcohol. But on the whole, I'm really concerned about A, one more liquor store, B, a liquor store combined with, not a liquor store, beer and wine combined with gas station and see I also have concerns about um, both the folks who are attending AA meetings at the church three nights a week um, and also the kids that are going in and out of the church all the time for the piano school and the children's chorus um, that use the building on a weekly and regular basis thank you anyone else wishing to speak that makes no sense John Rotafail, 62 Grandwall Road. Um, I'm actually familiar with Neon. There's only four of them that are in existence. Am I right on that? There's four Neons? Yes, currently, but it's a, uh, we're coming in. They're basically developing all through Massachusetts. It's probably coming into the... Uh, well, I mean, right now, there's one in Seekonk, there's one in Warwick, there's one in Portsmouth, and there's one in Middletown. So those are all Rhode Island. Seekonk's kind of close to the border in Rhode Island. Like I said, I kind of, one of my things is I love Cumberland Farms, you know, um, I trust them, 7-Eleven, um, so this isn't a giant operator that has a big track record. So, um, you know, it would maybe be a good idea, you know, I do think we need gas stations. I mean, there seem, there, there does seem to be, you know, the people might say that there's not a need for alcohol. There is a need to get gas when you're going down the road. So. I mean, that would be a benefit, but to have it, you know, why can't they just open up the convenience store and open up selling gas, see how they do as an operator, and if they are a good operator, maybe a year from now, that's when they could come back. Most of the convenience stores in Quincy, up until a few years ago, none of them sold alcohol. And we started, you know, there's a 7-Eleven, you know, there's a couple of them that sell alcohol right now. But it really isn't a good idea because you have kids going into the store and it's mixing them. And to tell you the truth, it is convenient. But, you know, one of the things that's sticking in my head about Neon is that, you know, I still am upset about paying $2.99 for the cheapest lighter that they have. So um, it's all about you know, being a positive, what's the benefit to the people that live in Quincy? The abutters obviously there, 
it isn't a positive to them, especially, I mean, feel bad for the people that are going to the AA meeting across the street, but as you can see, this meeting, we are very friendly to alcohol, you know, so I mean, it's hard to be a non-drinker and events are usually sponsored around drinking. So, I mean, I think this is going to hurt other people that have liquor stores. I mean, it's, like I said, it's convenient, but it's, it's actually hurting the people. You know, let's just say right now in the city, we don't have any place like late night. Am I, is the, is the convenience store going to be open 24 hours or is this a 6 to 11 store? Till 11 p.m. Okay. So, two of their stores are open 24 hours and two of them are, are open um, 6 to 11. So, um, they'll there's a possibility because we do have people in the city that are doing 24 hours that they could come back at some point and ask for 24 hour. Now we got a store that's gonna be open hours where you can't sell alcohol. Let's just say at six o'clock in the morning, it's illegal to sell alcohol, but there's gonna be alcohol in the business. So I kinda like all the places that sell alcohol to be locked until it's being sold. If they were more established, you know, uh, but even if Cumberland Farms was coming to the city and they were going in that location, they would be happy to just sell gas and food. They wouldn't even ask you for a liquor license. So they're asking you for a lot. I'm not sure what promises that they were made when they bought that property, but when you buy a property, it doesn't come with any zoning variances. It doesn't come with any licenses from the license board. The license board and the zoning board are the people that grant those licenses. So um, I don't think they deserve to have a liquor license here and the people behind me don't think they deserve to have a liquor license here. And I'll leave it up to the board to think if you think they deserve a liquor license. Thank you. Hi, uh, if possible, I'd love to respond to some sure. of the uh, questions that were posed and kind of identify some, some of the areas. Uh, the first thing I, I, one of the issues that came up was the hours of operation. We have uh, basically followed the code to a T. Uh, basically pursuant to section 10.2 of the ordinance uh, allows us to have hours of operation from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days a week. Uh, if there's issues on uh, the time periods of which alcohol could be sold, that's something in which I think we can have a discussion about. Uh, in connection with the comments, uh, yes. Um, we are in the business, uh, we're in the business of competition. Uh, competition is not a, um, a decision criteria in which uh, I believe should be taken into consideration. Uh, competition is good for the area. We are taking a site that literally is a dilapidated site. Uh, we are looking to do some substantial improvements uh, to the area and with that, This has all been filed. You guys have this. I kind of put it in a package for you guys. For your convenience. Yeah. Sorry, I should have asked for a broke check. I apologize. Thank you. Um, just to give you a sense, there's a lot in this. This is concerning the next application as well. Uh, but in essence, if you look at the second page, uh, this is really proposing uh, what we are looking to do. Uh, the existing conditions, like you, as you can see, really just has a, a one-store brick building and the rest of it is paved. Uh, what we are looking to do is bring in and basically utilize the same footprint of the building which we had, uh, establish some substantial landscaping. We really have taken to heart the neighborhood. We are abutting a residential neighborhood. We conducted a uh, residential meeting with, uh, with the city councilor. Uh, scheduled that prior to filing the uh, request uh, with the building inspection department for our, for our, uh, a request for uh, pre-existing non-conforming finding, and uh, it was well attended as well. Uh, we believe that we listened to the comments in which were made of that. We actually went back to the to the plans and really bumped up our landscaping plan in, in consideration of that. We do realize that we do about a residential neighborhood on one side. We are in a zone BB. Uh, this is an area that is heavily uh, commercial property. It is a site that is a dilapidated site that we are really looking to uh, enhance the quality and, and, and do compete with businesses around. 
I do realize that there is a church that is local to us, but there's also uh, other businesses, not just ours, that surround the church. Uh, we believe that we are providing a high quality product. Um, it's kind of interesting. I actually do a lot of permitting for Cumberland Farms. Uh, I've permitted probably over 40 projects throughout Massachusetts, so I understand uh, the product. I understand what they do. Uh, this is a new product that's coming in uh, that has fresh food, a different type of take on food, and it's going to be a different experience uh, that's going to be provided. And if you look, kind of flip through, we've got some renderings of the site. This is not the exact site, uh, but this is uh, renderings of what the exterior of the site will look like. Um, we believe it's very tasteful, it's very um, uh, uh, today, and we'll basically uh, bring in a business in which will be, I think the neighborhood will really enjoy. Uh, it is a neighborhood, uh, it does provide services, not only gas, but also convenience. Uh, we believe that it'll be a significant upgrade to the area, and I believe once it's built, uh, neighbors uh, will appreciate the convenience of not only uh, filling up your gas but also getting food but also having the ability to get wine and some beer products. Uh, as I indicated I do know and I, I, I hear uh, the comments uh, from the, uh, the pastor of the church uh, but we are in an area that permits this use uh, and we believe that we are going to uh, do so in such a safe um, and meaningful manner. I want to turn it over uh, real quick. I really like our uh, brand manager to kind of talk about the security measures that we do take seriously for alcohol and beer. Uh, but just wanted to address another concern uh, with regard to uh, the question about the pumps. Um, basically, uh, the pumps uh, we're going. We have to get a sign application. Um, any any noise come, Basically, the the any screens on it will identify a. Uh, the menu options and the gas prices. Uh, and any uh, noise on that will be at a very limited amount. It will not come off of the property. Again, we really have taken the residential neighborhood in heart and really putting together what we believe is a really uh, good project for both the neighborhood, the city, but also for us as well. I'd love to turn it over to Bajat uh, to have him kind of talk about some of the uh, alcohol aspects of things. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having us. So this is a copy of our menu. Just to go quickly. So, um, it's actually in their package. But okay. Yes, I just want to include it. Yeah. So we have um, we have four stores. We have one in Middletown and Portsmouth, and both in a very heavy residential area. Uh, let me talk about our food for a second. Uh, so our food is not what you would normally get in a convenience store. So it's a serious upgrade to convenience store, and, and no, uh, you know, mark on anybody else. Um, we have Roman pizzas. We have fresh burgers, we have fresh sandwiches, we have fresh salads. Um, so it's something a really serious upgrade, as Doug said, to the neighborhood and the community. It'll, it'll feel very, very good. Um, let me touch on the video. The video is actually, the one we have in all four stores, has no audio. So it's just video. And it's just video of food and, and drinks and coffee and sandwiches and salads, etc. Uh, we have a little bit of background music that is really low, but we opted not to have the video blasting, and that's how we have it in our four stores. Um, what else can I answer? Don't be forgetting. The alcohol. The alcohol. So our managers go through six weeks of training. So this is, you know, it's not a prime steakhouse, all right, but they go six weeks of training to make sure they understand all these regulations, and we want to play a very important role in our community. I've been in the restaurant hospitality business for 38 years. Um, I ran all the Petuchis in Boston, I ran all the Upon Pan in Boston, so this is nothing new except for the fuel part. And our managers go through very rigid training on fuel. We have uh, third party companies that audit us on carting, anything carting, cigarettes, <coughs> alcohol, spill, cleanup, etc. And, and I will tell you, I'm very proud of our team. Six o'clock in the morning in every one of our stores, people wiping the place down outside, wiping the pumps, wiping the videos. We have a lot of pride in our brand. This is not a small operator at all. Um, our investment group owns over 200 hotels and restaurants. So this is not a small operation. And I've been in very large restaurants all throughout New England for a very, very long time and we'll be very, very proud to be part of Quincy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
So at the end of the day, uh, just want to thank you guys for your time. We uh, are more than willing to answer any questions that the board may have. Um, and uh, we request uh, that this respectfully request that the board grant our uh, CV license as well as the beer and wine license. Thank you. Any questions, concerns from any board members? <coughs> One question. Um, I, I know the question that was mentioned about the self checkout for yeah. um, alcohol. Is that something that's being done, self checkout, or will it be a register? No, there's no self checkout for alcohol. There's no self checkout for cigarettes either. Yeah. Cigarettes are all behind the counter. The beer and wine is in a complete cooler. You have to go through a cashier, obviously. Okay. Yes. So, um, I will say that I, I hear your concerns, um, <coughs> and I know the neighborhood well, and right now it is a blight, as far as I'm concerned, and I understand the competition, but I do understand that the alcohol sales in the last few years have been very good for everybody. And so I don't know if that's something that we, you know, really would take into consideration because it hasn't hit that community. Um, as far as the pastor in um, the AA meetings, I, I completely understand people that have issues and problems, but I also understand that I like to think in Quincy, our store owners <coughs> run responsible services to all of our residents. And this is a through way through our city, even out, you know, um, into um, the South Shore. And so for that, um, I, I think that they've shown that they're responsible. I think that it's a nice, clean, and effective business for the city of Quincy. Um, so for that, I will be voting in favor. Um, but I can't speak for my board members. I think um, I will, oh, Commissioner Duca. Yeah, um, Commissioner Duca. Yeah, I'll, I'll echo some of the <coughs> items that the chair talked about. I, I do think um, that this is a substantial improvement to the area. I think it's uh, an appropriate use of the site. It's an allowed use uh, in that district. Um, I, I can't imagine a, a much better use uh, of the site. Um, the, it's tastefully done. I've worked with the clients for the last four months. Um, it provides a service and a convenience to the neighborhood. Uh, so I'll be voting in favor as well. And with that, um, looking for a motion, and if no one has anything else, um, and Sue, could you call a roll? I'd like to make a motion to grant the request of Neon Beverage LLC doing business as Neon Marketplace 453. Kyle Roberg, manager for an off-premises package store retail wines and malt beverage license for the premises located at 453 and 465 Washington Street and 857 Southern Artery. Alcohol sales from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., 10 a.m. on Sundays. The applicant also requests a common victual license for the same location. The proposed premises is a 4,999 square foot single story convenience store represented by attorney Douglas Troyer. Second. So this will be a roll call vote on the alcohol motion. Deputy Barron. Aye. In favor. In favor, yes. Detective Brown. In favor. Commissioner Castley. In favor. Director Duca. In favor. Chair Crispo. In favor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of Neon Beverage LLC doing business as Neon Marketplace 453 for a wine and malt beverage package store license for the premises located at 453 and 465 Washington Street and 857 Southern Artery. 
this for the common picture of the license. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 On to agenda item number 11 here regarding the request of Neon Washington Street, Quincy LLC, doing business as Neon Marketplace for a gas station self-service license, as well as a license for related underground fuel tank storage for the premise located at 453 465 Washington Street and 857 Southern Artery. Proposed manager, Kyle Ropper, Proposed hours of operation are 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Attorney Douglas Troyer. Good afternoon. Doug Troyer on behalf of Neon Washington Street LLC. Um, Madam Chair, rest of the board, thank you for your time. Uh, real quickly on this one. Um, so we are looking uh, to have uh, basically permitted as a right to have a, a gasoline station there. We are looking to construct four gasoline islands with four gasoline dispensers, eight fueling positions on the site. Construct a protective canopy of downward reflecting lighting and a full fire suppression system over the gasoline islands and install state of the art underground storage tanks that meet all applicable EPA regulations. With us today is uh, Jim Bernardino from CMG, who is our underground storage tank engineer, uh, to provide you with some, some details. Thank you for the record. Jim Bernardino with CMG Engineering. Um, we put together the underground storage tank um, plans for this uh, project. I'll go over just some of the key components, the safety components and things of that nature that are implemented in the design. Um, mostly are required by state and federal regulations. Some are added in, in, in just for redundancy as well, just for belt and suspenders. Uh, just to take a look, he did, um, our attorney did mention that we are going to have a full uh, fire suppression system for the um, built into the canopy, surrounded by the uh, what we call positive limiting barriers, which will collect and disperse any type of spills that may occur. You see those grooves around the ends. Um, the actual dispensing islands themselves have been uh, protected by bollards to help prevent crashes into them. Uh, have our raised islands as well, obviously to prevent any uh, vehicular collisions. Uh, but we also have measures in place that we have breakaway hoses. If someone drives off, we're not going to have gasoline spewing everywhere. Likewise, with a catastrophic impact, we, uh, the dispensers are equipped with share valves, which will shut off any type of gasoline flows if, should the dispenser be jarred by any type of impact, such as a vehicle. Um, we've also, uh, to help prevent uh, leaks uh, and contamination to the subsurface, uh, all of the equipment is going to be watertight. Uh, fitted with uh, um, sensors that will detect any type of leak intrusion um, into the, um, the watertight sumps that are uh, part of the overall system. Uh, sumps are located underneath the dispensers themselves that could collect any drips from the dispenser, but there's also uh, watertight sumps with sensors at the tanks themselves at the fill ports. So when the tank driver comes to fill, any drip that comes out of it will be contained within the sump itself and not um, allow for any seepage onto the ground. Um, the tanks are all double-walled fiberglass. Um, they have an interstitial space between the two tanks that um, will have a continuous monitoring system associated with that. So if there is any fluid coming out or into the tank in that double wall, there'll be uh, you know, obviously continuous monitoring for that uh, with uh, alarms that uh, will be located within, within the building themselves. Uh, to help assist with protection of overfilling, if we have uh, a delivery driver that may not be as um, aware of his surroundings as he should be, uh, the tank has a redundant overfill protection system. One, there's a high level alarm that will be part of the overall system, but we also have an emergency shutoff valve in the drop tube where he actually fills. If it gets up to a certain 90% capacity, it shuts off and then not allowing any more water, to, um, any more fuel to flow into the tanks themselves. Um, you know, with that, there's a comprehensive uh, gauging system associated with that, uh, with the system. Tell you the levels, how much uh, fuel has been uh, put in, dispensed, and the like. Um, and we've also equipped the site with a uh, vapor recovering system as well. So when we're putting in our gas, obviously we have to emit vapors, <clears throat> but we have a system that connects to the trucks where we're able to extract 
uh, vapors as well uh, during the um, you know fueling process from when we get the larger deliveries. You know, um, as as uh, underground system goes, it's pretty much the the modern technologies that's been in there, complying with all the state federal regulations. Um, so with that, um, I would you know pull it to the, to the board for any further questions. No, I'm good. Uh, that's our presentation. If you have any questions, please let us know. We respectfully request that the underground storage take license be granted. Thank you. Any questions concerning I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of Neon Washington Street, Quincy LLC, DBA Neon Marketplace for a gas station self-service license for the premises located at 453 and 465 Washington Street and 857 Southern Island. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to approve the request of Neon Washington Street, LLC. Quincy LLC, DBA, Neon Marketplace for an underground fuel storage tank for the premises located at 453 and 465 Washington Street and 857 Southern Artery. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. <coughs> Thank you. I also just wanted to say one thing. Uh, your staff so walked me through a lot of this process and you have the best staff. And I really appreciate the time. Oh, yeah. So answer my stupid questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Agenda item number one. Karen regarding the request of the Mary Monk Association for a special permits for the one day liquor license for their events over the 4th of July weekend, July 2nd, 9 a.m. Freedom Run and Freedom Celebration with beer and wine from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. and July 4th Parade at 12:30 p.m. Mark Sauter. Hi, how are Hi. you? Hi, good. Sorry good. about that. Not your. It's the uh, the red line. The new yeah. Saturday schedule through the week. So. Oh boy. Okay. But well, happy to be here. We're happy to hear about your events. Uh, sure. So it's uh, similar things that have always been uh, going on down at the beach for the last uh, you know numerous decades. Um, we're going to bring back the Freedom Run, uh, which is a two and a half mile road race. Uh, starts at Marymount Beach, loops through the neighborhood, uh, ends at Marymount Beach. That is uh, Saturday morning, um, and I've been in contact with the uh, Quincy uh, Police Department about uh, you know having the, the necessary uh, bikes and uh, to help with the race. So that's Saturday morning, um, and then Saturday afternoon into the evening from. Five to nine is the, uh, the the beach the beach celebration. Um, we'll have three food vendors. Uh, uh, Craig's Cafe uh, from across the street uh, will be there. Um, a pizza uh, uh, mobile pizza oven that's been uh, to the beach this year already, and then uh, the time traveling food truck, which I know has been in the city also. So they'll they'll be providing the food for the night. Um, we're looking to sell beer and wine uh, from 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock uh, for, for that evening. Um, that's what is on Saturday, uh, mm -hmm. July 2nd, and then sa Monday, July 4th, will be the, the annual parade. Uh, the only difference mm -hmm. there is we're going to start it at 12.30 uh, instead of 1 o'clock. So, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, just out of curiosity, uh, sure. is this supersede all the other road races? Wasn't there one on the third or sometimes the fourth? There well? used to be, <coughs> Marymount used to do one on July 3rd yes. on that evening. Yep. And we've taken, we've, we're not doing things on July 3rd anymore. Okay. Found it, we're going to try to do things on the Saturday, always before July 4th, just so we're not, you know, five o'clock for that old road race was you had people coming home from work on July 3rd. And it just didn't really make sense. We wanted to try to do something earlier. Squanum still does have their road race, I think, on that Saturday as well. But I think theirs is at 10 okay. or 10.30. I just, yeah. for a long time, I was always involved in it. Did you talk to Captain McCusper about that? Yes. Who you reached out to? Yes. Okay, so just so there's no conflict. Right, no. They, I was in there, I would be expecting to do it on the third. Right. I just wanted to make sure that was, uh, right. can't do, you weren't going to have a couple. No, so awesome. no, just, just okay. Saturday morning. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Any 
like to make a motion to grant the request of the Merrimount Association for a special permit and a one-day liquor license for their events over the 4th of July weekend, July 2nd, 9 a.m., Freedom Run and Freedom Celebration, beer and wine from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., and July 4th, a parade at 12.30 p.m. Second. Represented by Mark Sada. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You're all set. Mark. All right. Thank, Thank you. you all. Have a good evening. Thanks. Happy July. Thank you. <laughs> I'm in favor of that too, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> and next, um, agenda item number two here, we got a request to the House Net Community Council for a special use permit for one day liquor license for two upcoming events, July 3rd, annual family fun day, July 3rd at H Water Drive, and September 10th, House Net Chowder Fest beer and wine. Alvin, Kevin, and James McCarthy, um, could not be here today. However, um, these are time-honored traditions in House Neck that have been going on for years and years. And both of these gentlemen do a great job um, representing House Neck and the kids, the fun activities that they plan. Um, and of course, the House Neck Charter Fest, which has become a staple in the city. Um, and um, all restaurants compete um, as well as locals um, bring their chowder and so for that um, I think that it would be okay if we move forward with the motion. I'd like to make a motion regarding the request of the House Net Community <coughs> Council for a special permit and one day liquor license for two upcoming events. Yeah. July 3rd, the annual family fun, family fun day on July 3rd at Edgewater Drive. And September 10th, the House Neck Chowder Fest beer and wine, represented by Aaron Cavan and James McCarthy. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That does conclude <coughs> our um, agenda, but we do have other business today. Our July 19th license board meeting proposed to be rescheduled till July 26. Um, looking for a motion. I take a motion to change the schedule for the license board from July 19th to July 26. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And looking for a motion to accept the minutes from the hearing on June 7th, 2022 when we have the reading. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next hearing is on July 26th, 2022. Looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. So granted.